Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Strompcast, episode 222, The Jenny Katamo Show. Now, boys, did anything interesting happen for you guys on the weekend? Richard, anything happen on, say, Saturday, for example, for you? Uh, you know what? I had some family come down. You know, they got to watch me have uh, a breakdown and uh, my dad have a breakdown as well, watching us absolutely win a huge fucking game. Uh, against Benfica, two one. We got the last minute banger this time. Uh, it was fun to not be on the other side of it for once. So we take those huge win, four points up with the game in hand. We got we got it's officially calculator time, boys. <laughs> Say it. That's calculator time. Pretty soon. Yes, sir. And Chris, how was your Saturday, man? It was good. I um I actually watched the game on my phone while standing in a parking lot with some friends after my own footy game. Nice. Um, the kick, I was like, I'm not making it home in time. I'm not trying to really <laughs> watch happening. while I'm driving. Um, I'm just going to chill in the parking lot. <laughs> and a couple of my teammates were also in, interested in the game. Watch, so uh, me and about four or five teammates watched the game on my phone in the parking lot. And what an ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a hit, son. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And someone who could be here today is Danny. Make sure you follow him down there as well. But most importantly, make sure you follow all things other on all social media platforms and podcast platforms. Without further ado, let's just get into it. The game we are speaking about, and that is the 2-1 victory against Benfica. The team as follows. Franco Israel goal, Inacio Cuarte, St. Just, Jenny Catano with the brace, Mateus Reis, Morita, Hulman, Pedro Gonzalez, Trincao, and Yokres off the bench, Ken Braganza, Edwards, Diamande, Paulinho, and Koba. Richard, I'll start off with you. What are your overall thoughts on this game? Uh, can I? I'm gonna start with the subs because they were weird subs. We got a lot to get into. Koba coming on for Hulman. I know Hulman was on the yellow. Was a weird sub, but Agatha coming on for Marita made sense. That was just two really weird subs. So I just want to point those out before we get to all the positives. Yeah, I don't. Um, I can't, I also was a bit surprised to see him coming in. I was like, I guess he trusts him a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm assuming because Hulman was on the yellow anyways, like that that might have played a factor. Um, but he is like, already suspended for the next game. If I'm not well, and, that, and that's my unless he was just worried about him because he's he'd already kind of got away with one or two, worried about going a man down. Mm-hmm, that's probably like I could see because this did, this game did get it wasn't too bad in the first half. I thought the first half was well officiated. There wasn't really too many incidents other than the Di Maria to pot. Um. It was the second half where things kind of started to unravel for both sides a bit. Like, tempers really started to flare. Um, and is is where, like, the ref kind of just lost some semblance of control. Uh, wild start. Like, what, 45 seconds in. Jenny Katamo off of the nice play by Pot uh, to finish off the goal. I almost had shades of Brian Ruiz. I saw him there all alone, open net. And for a split second, we had like a Vietnam flashback to uh, 2016. Uh, but but he squared. He it didn't matter because it was in the net. It was great. Uh, but Vika actually, I they tied right for halftime. It was deserved. I think they actually I thought outplayed us for a good stretch of the first half. We didn't really do a whole lot once we scored the goal. We had a couple attacks here and there, and like maybe one or two chances. But I felt like they controlled the pace of the game. They. They uh, stuck in our end for long stretches. Um, they were the ones forcing the turnovers and making us look sloppy. Uh, so, like, their goal sucked because it was at the worst possible. It was like a gut punch, right, like, as the last play of, of half uh, before the first half ended. And it was a set play again. How many set plays have we uh, let goals off of? I feel like it's every at least every other game we let a goal in off of a set piece. Um it I went thought we from forty to forty two percent with that goal, right? Yeah, it must have been, yeah. Uh, I'm just sure this con from off. I think bo- I have a bit of both. <laughs> a bit of both. Because the first the first half outside like the Di Maria incident, like I didn't really have any issues. The second half was where it was getting really like out of control and there's just fouls left, right, and center. Uh, second half I felt we played better and we deserved the goal in the second half. A draw would have been fair. If, if in all honesty, if we're going to be honest with ourselves, a draw would have been fair. Um, I'm not going to complain about the the two one win. I felt we did enough to at least nick nick the nick the result. Um, 
nobody really stood out. Like other than Jen, Jenny was poor outside of the two goals, though. I don't want to let that be forgotten. He was kind of kind of asked for a couple stretches this game, but he's got two goals, one of which is a banger. So we're not going to complain too much. Uh, Potts getting the assist on the first goal was a great job for him. Uh, Joker has had a couple of chances, almost had an assist as well. So good on him. Uh, Hulman was great, other than the yellow card. That I know that's what bumps him down a bit. Kawach was great. Morita was average. It wasn't his worst game, but it wasn't his best game. He was just kind of there. Uh, when Braganza came on, I thought he was kind of the same. He did. He looked good at points. Um, the only one, yeah, the only ones that really didn't do much was Paulinho and Quindretti for me off the bench. Uh, I will say as well, like, and my dad pointed this out as well. Inacio's not looked great. He made it subbed of- off. He got some, well, yeah, he looked sloppy even in the first half, just like misplaced passes or not enough power on passes. Like, he's ever since he's come back from injury, he's just looked like he's lost a step or two, it seems. Um, that's really it. Matthias Reich was fine. Um, there's really no other like nitpicky things to get into. Israel, the goal, the goal isn't really his fault. That's on Matthias Reich for marking the guy in front of him when he should have been paying attention to the player behind him. Uh, he just he just gets caught out completely, um, and basically gives the guy a, a free chance at goal. Um, that's really it. There's not much else to really say about this. A, a draw would have been deserved. I'm never gonna complain about a win, though. Um, it feels like a somewhat fair result, but I could see why a Benfica fan would be feel hard done by by the result as well because they they did play well. I gotta give them their props, but also sucks to be you. Eat shit. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, Chris, what are your overall thoughts on this game? Um, yeah, I think it draws probably the fair result. The second half was definitely more lively mm-hmm. um, than the first. Um, yeah, I mean, I was honestly just like, from minutes like 50 to 70, I was just like, honestly, just like proud of the boys. Um, I thought that they were playing really well. I thought that we were creating chances. Um, Jokrez is unlucky um, not to score. He's hit the bar so hard, it's literally gone out of bounds in the air. It's like the hardest yeah. anyone's ever hit the crossbar. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's tough because, um, like, I guess we can get into some of the somewhat controversial officiating decisions or or not decisions. Um, but I, I don't really have that much to complain about. It's a tough game. It's going to be ugly at times. Um, Kawats was massive. St. Juice was balling. Um, yeah, Jenny's, Jenny didn't have his greatest game for sure, but he's made his chances count, which counts for a lot. (laughs) Um, I think Morita continues to kind of like trend down and Braganza continues to trend up. I think it's only a matter of time until Bergansa is the starter. I think it will probably happen before the end of the season. Um, not to say Morita is a bad player. I just think that he's in better form right now. Um, on the initial goal, like what a great press and then what a great move to beat two players by Poth and center it. Um, I don't really have that much to add other than just, you know, we, we fall to the end. A draw would have been probably fine considering that we had the advantage in the table and um made it made it count at the end maybe a bit lucky we were already the team in europe's top leagues that has the most expected goals above or the most goals over their expected goals i think we were 19 goals above our expected goals and I mean, what that probably had an XG of like 0.03. So just keep just keep adding the goals in. Let's just keep overperforming the XG until the end of the season. Win two trophies and uh, and call it a season. Yeah, no, completely agree. I'm not going to piggyback too much what you guys said. Um, I will agree with Richard though. I thought Jenny, apart from the two goals, was pretty abysmal. As soon as he got that yellow card for diving, which was such a bad dive, by the way, so like needless as well, Otamendi knew exactly what he was going to do, and that just didn't work in uh, Jenny's favour. But as soon as he got that yellow card, it felt like his confidence just went completely out the window. And I thought he was going to get subbed at the half. I'm glad he didn't, but it's the way it sort of looked like it was going. Uh, but to score in the first 40 seconds or minute, it's just 
incredible. The fact we scored in like the, the first minute and the 91st minute is sort of a nice little parallel between the game there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I do get what you're saying when you say uh, a draw would have been fair, but I do think we probably had the better chances. Jokre's hitting the crossbar, you know, Braganza missing that open goal. Obviously, the Jenny goal itself, both of them. We had quite a few decent counter attacks as well, as uh, Alf said, uh, just the last pass not being great. Some of them from Jenny uh, in that last sort of final, final pass that we needed to do. Just couldn't do it. In terms of individual performances as well, I'll give my uh, shout out to St. Just. He was absolutely fantastic. And the way he was sprinting sometimes, I was just like, do not pull a muscle. Just do not pull a muscle. <laughs> keeping up, keeping up with Rafa. Yeah, sprinting hard. Keeping up with Rafa is not an easy task. And St. Just was just on his case the whole time. And it did sort of save Inacio quite a few times when he got beat by the man or Kawhi got beat by the man. St. Just was always there. And he had to do it a lot with Jenny as well. But for me, St. Just was the best defender on the pitch. I thought Kawhi was fantastic as well. But for me, St. Just was that level above. Uh, again, Kawhi was very good. Inacio, again, maybe the worst performer. Feels like whenever he plays against Benfica, he's just not there. Obviously, in the, the first game of the season, he gets sent off with two yellows in this game, not looking like he wanted to be there at all and getting subbed off, which is unusual. You don't really see Inacio getting subbed off that much. But I think it was definitely a needed substitution. At that point for, for Diamonde coming on, which was um, a good sub by Amarim. Mateus Reyes, apart from the goal, I thought was fantastic. You know, he did lose concentration on uh, on the goal from, from Bayer. It was his man, completely left him open. Uh, and again, 45% of our goals this season have been from set pieces. And you can see why we have defending like that. And uh, yeah, not to blame Franco Israel there, but it just felt like the defence could have done a bit better. We're not that really good in the air. When I keep thinking about all the goals we conceded, it's always someone getting beat in the air or someone not like paying attention to the runners. And in this game, unfortunately, it was the same. Pedro Gonzalez, man, uh, to me, he was not fit enough to play that game. He only played, what, I think 55 minutes, maybe 60 minutes. Yeah, he was and, He was one of the first subs, if not the yeah. first sub, if I remember. And he was he was blowing. He was absolutely knackered. And does ever least so. He was, he was really good. Uh, the assist on that goal itself was just well, it, it sort of hockey assist, as you guys like to say, that on that that first goal. It was all Pedro Gonzalez. was a really good run. Had Florentino and, Dem- and I was going to say Demba Bar, Alexandra Bar. Demba uh, Bar. <laughs> it's just the first name no. I think of Bar. It's who, I, who I think of Demba Bar. But yeah, uh, I thought Pedro Gonzalez was fantastic. Jokrez, again, uh, I thought played good. It's one of them games where it's difficult to say he played well because he didn't score. He's a striker, but you know, hit the bar, made so many of his chances good. You could argue that him being in front of Trubin is the reason why they scored, putting that pressure on him. And it was, what, the six centimetres or 12 centimetres or something offside, uh, or yeah. sorry, onside that you can uh, give it. And Jokes was just, again, he's like an engine all game, never stops running. Uh, even towards the end when he had that little scrap of Otamendi at the final whistle, it was because <laughs> Jokes would not stop running. And he's just like yeah. a, a, a Duracell bunny. He just goes and goes and goes and he's just so good it's a pleasure to watch him uh speaking of pleasures to watch man Hulmond again how he got booked for that Ottomendi pushing him and you can see Hulmond does not react he's just like why you pushed me and then getting the yellow card for that was Locked down so the dumb way. yeah it must have been it was it's just crazy because uh, Ottomendi gets a straight yellow and Hulmond gets a straight yellow Hulmond yeah. missing the next game because of it also, a funny moment. Nuno Santos getting booked from the bench means he misses the next game as well. Yeah, <laughs> I almost thought it was hilarious. intentional to like clear a slate or something. That's what I was. That's what I thought for a split second. <laughs> they've got the. It's like like Gibraltar and Porto like right after, right? So I wonder if that yeah. was part of the plan. It's like, well, let's have a miss Gil as opposed to the games like which is a game we can sort of deal with, which is not the game you can kind of really fuck up on, which is the the Gibraltar Porto. So maybe that was it. Yeah. And I thought, again, like like you guys said, I thought Marita was poor. Braganza came on and was much better. And he has been for the sort of last maybe month or so. I'd say he's been, probably has Marita's number. Um, Israel didn't have a lot to do, but when he did, that save on Di Maria was incredible. And he had the sort of similar save on Tuesday as well, saving that a sort of finesse shot from outside the box from twice, Di Maria. Twice in, in the span of a week, he's robbed uh, Di Maria. Yeah, he's he's been fantastic, like really good. And I think hopefully... Uh, he is the the starting number one for the rest of the season because Dan apparently already back in training, already on the pitch. Not he's still for, he's still a couple of weeks you know, away though. They said so. Yeah, but I just just hope they don't try and force him in because that would just be. And I think you can see that the team trust him as well with the the long balls as well, playing with his feet. They they're very quick to go back to him. I feel like they'd be less quick with a Dan. They might look at on the right or the left, but they have no problem going back to Israel, which is uh, 
he's really good, really shows confidence in the goalkeeper. And I think he he deserves it. He's been been really good. Probably one of the best players in this little stretch we've had. I know he's had the he had the the punch against the is it Joel? No, who was it against? It was who did he do that? Punch? Estrella. Estrella, he, did, that, uh, he did the punch and somehow it went backwards. And yeah, like, but he was still in that game. Best. He made some good saves. So he has that one moment and hopefully it's just, you know, it's like I said, I've said multiple times, this is his first professional season as like a number one. He's had stretches of games. He's I think looked, he's he's looked, two in a row. He's looked better every game. Like he looks a bit, like a little teensy bit more comfortable as time goes on, which is more than we had hoped, more than we could have asked for. Yeah, definitely. And like, like I said, first professional season, I think the majority of games he's probably played was maybe like two in a row last season and, and uh, this season until so, yeah. Adan came in, came, uh, was injured. So it really shows that I think he is improving game by game. I think it's, like I said, the team trusts yeah. him more, which is really good. Uh, in terms of the bench, you know, I thought Braganza was a very good sub. Edwards came on and was a, was a pain as well. Really good sub as well. Not so good of a sub was Kova, who nearly cost us the <laughs> game as soon as he came on. <laughs> it was a weird, I said at the beginning, it was a weird sub to bring out. It was a weird yeah. substitution. I, I just, I was just like, what? Like, he gave the ball away and they nearly scored. But then on the flip side, he did get a, a Zona sent off uh, a double yellow with with a pretty nasty tackle, to be fair. I'm surprised it wasn't. It could have probably been looked at as a straight red. But, uh, you know, it's good from him to, to get the ball first. But I just didn't really see, a, you know, the need of bringing him on. He didn't really add anything to the overall team. But then when you look at the bench, it's either him or Nuno Santos on a yellow card. Do you want to bring on Nuno Santos on a yellow card for... You know, uh, for Hulman, uh, who I think again was bought off on the yellow card, it's a difficult sub to make. So I, I do uh, have sympathy a bit there. But you know, COVID didn't look great, and he hasn't really looked great since joining. I know he's only had limited minutes, but from the limited minutes we've seen, it's been average um, to poor. Yeah, for the most part. but that uh, that goal from Jenny in the last minute, it was oh, warms my just, heart. That I, I tweet about. I think the the best memory I have of like a sport if I had, like a game was that one in COVID season where Mateus Nunes scored the winner, you know, and that was literally the last kick of the game. That was it, the winner, the header, and that was it. And that's when I knew, like, okay, we could win this title. Give you hope. Now, I, I think this one's a close second, really. I don't. Th- again, I'm not saying we're going to win the title or anything, but in terms of this bits, one's there for me. 90th minute winner against a rival. Can you like? Uh, can you put it up like it has to be close up there for it's the only at least one for our generation overtake my number one because my number one is the 2008 semi-final in the tasa the 5-3 circus game that's like yeah. one of the best games of football like i've ever watched so like it's tough to top yeah. that one just for pure entertainment value but it was just like it was so scoring at the end where it's like Braganza misses that easy chunk. All you have to do is just tap it. And, and you're like, all oh, literally, I was like, bro, just tap it in. All you gotta and, do is just get your foot on it. And he like rolls his foot over it instead. And, and like, then there's it. the that VAR call on Braganza saying that that uh Alexandra Barr fouled him and it, it's a difficult angle. I still don't know what happened. I, even, what the appeal was. even so, like I don't think there was really that much in it like it would have been such a stupid and harsh penalty personally to to give like is there a bit of contact yeah but like but against is already kind of going down when the contact's made i don't think it should have been a penalty i was just yeah. baffled why they were looking at it for so long like there's no way they're calling this like i just couldn't really see anything from the replays and i think that's probably why they didn't give it there was no sort of clear no exactly like, yeah, i didn't i didn't see anything really malicious even on first glance like it i was like i don't see one the replays didn't show us much like and what we could sh- see i was like there doesn't really look to be much that like there's definitely not enough there to really give it like it'd be so yeah. harsh and then the just the, the best thing it takes ages to do the var call as soon as the ball comes in jenny's on his own just a beautiful so like i don't think he could hit it better if he tried just absolutely beautiful on his right on his right too oh, yeah on his right foot top yeah. corner trubin has absolutely no chance and then just pandemonium crazy and then we still had eight minutes to play because you know we were only what a minute a minute into added time we were like a minute yeah it was like 40 it was like right into added time and because of that and uh and the review it ended up being like another seven minutes so i was like yeah as soon as i saw like five or six minutes give him like this is gonna be like eight minutes total (laughs) it was just just crazy like the goal going in just 
I just couldn't believe it. I still really can't believe that it happened as well. But, yeah. you know, especially because we said, I don't think Chenny was that great after his first goal. He gave the ball away multiple times mm-hmm. and he just wasn't focused, I don't think. And maybe he was because he was on that yellow, he just didn't want to be as rash or as, like, confident as he would have been. But, you know, shows what I know because he wouldn't have scored the winner anyway. Hey, well, would you have preferred him to sub in as Gallo after and then we would have had no... Friggin, uh offensive like maybe as guy scores that man as guy was as not scoring that man you got you you're going with as guy with Mateus Rice on your friggin uh <laughs> on your way on your uh wing backs yeah you're having zero you're having negative offensive output but yeah I just think um crazy game it was uh the the referee was was uh not great I know we spoke about the real which I'll bring a picture up in a minute but also in the interest of fairness, I think Hillman probably should have seen double yellows as well. They were on the car attack. He trips him up, doesn't get the ball. I thought that was it. I thought that was the game done. Inacio 2.0 and the referee, for some reason, you know, I'm, was, I'm yeah, happy he did it. Like he should have got the card, not the friggin' shoving match. Yeah. That didn't, it wasn't really a shoving match. I was just like, thank God yeah, he was, didn't that was call it. But then to the talking point, it actually went quite viral in terms of uh, international, punch, and that is yeah. the uh, the punch of the area. It doesn't really we show. Always go, we all, our league always goes viral for like the best stuff, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. In a game like this, and I think with uh, with Amorim like being linked everywhere, a lot more this eyes are on scoring. Well. Yeah, and you know the image doesn't do it justice, but he he does connect. And whether it's intentional or not, I don't know. But the rule state, you know, close fist punch, in his face. <laughs> It should have been a red. VAR yeah. didn't even have a look, I don't think. But like, no, they did. They didn't. There was a bit of a delay, but I think it was more just the ref was kind of telling everybody, like, "Hey, settle down," because like tempers were already starting to flare. Uh, yeah, but yeah. There was no VAR, uh, like review. And he, he told Pep to get got, up straight away. As well. Pep, I told, got, which was because to get Pep up got away. Pep got sent off for like almost a like a very similar incident in their game against us. Yeah, right. So that's same. why I was like, yeah. "Oh, like if they go to VAR, like he'll pro- he might actually get sent off." And they just never went to VAR. Pot needed so. to bite the lip, like Mateus Race, man. Get get the blood. Get Pot the needed to like bite his lip or like scratch at his nose or something. Man. Get like the WWE blade and just kind of <laughs> I don't blade it like your sock or your tape or something, dude. Just make yeah. yourself up. Uh, Chris, you would agree with that? Should have been a red card as well. Yeah, uh, I do. I think he makes contact. And yeah. he's swinging his arm. I mean, I don't know what he's thinking, but he got away with it. Yeah, 100%. Uh, to go back to the actual game, though, uh, Richard, I'll ask you, who was your uh, man in the match for this game? I should give it to Jenny because he had the two goals. But I think I'm going to give it to Hillman. Actually, no, I'm going to give it to Kowach. Cool. We haven't talked a lot about Kowach. Kowach was great. I actually saved the goal. At one point, so oh I'm yeah, forgot about that. I'm yeah, I'm gonna give it to Sebek Watch today, just just to be a little bit different. But I wouldn't begrudge anyone for saying Jenny got two huge goals, literally ninety minutes apart. He scored forty five seconds in, and then at ninety forty five or mm-hmm. whatever, so a full ninety from Jenny Katamo in that sense. Uh, but I'm gonna give it to Kawach just because he was solid as usual. Had the one uh, clearance that uh, if he doesn't, as a surefire goal, like he was, he was good all game. So I'll give it to him. Yeah, and speaking on that Kawhi's one, I know we spoke good about Israel, but he was not that great on that goal. Luckily, Kawhi's was there. And it's, to be fair, it's a great clearance, but it's also lucky from Kawhi's as it hits his trailing foot. It doesn't even hit the foot. He goes to like swap. Yeah, it's, it, it hits him in the in his butt, in his back foot, not uh, not his front foot that he's initially trying to block with. Yeah, but he's still a, a great block regardless. Uh, my man of the match, you know, a bit left field. I mentioned it earlier. St. Just was, I thought, fantastic. I, want, I think he was the best defender there. When he's fit, which is very rare, he is the best defender in our team, I would say. <laughs> when he's fit for one-seventh of the season. <laughs> yeah, this, I think this, this might have been yeah, it's two, well, no. two full 90s in, in a row in, in so the league, that is. Not so in it's, the officially, league. it's officially a streak. He can't play Friday. Friday. He can't. That's not an option. No shot. No, no shot <laughs> on the same Friday. And I think it's – I was speaking with Kevin the other day, and he was saying I think the record of him playing like multiple games in a row – I think we have four or five, and it was that stretch from Arsenal to Juventus where he played not ninety minutes, but he played um, in game. games from there. So I think we're we're probably at four now, maybe maybe five, but hopefully he stays at the end of the season because I don't know if you guys have watched the Sporting backstage video as well. 
he he's phenomenal on that and you could tell he really okay. i guess he really does like the club and uh yeah, yeah just give it a watch if you haven't uh chris who was your man in the match uh i'm gonna go with humeland the man with the almost face tackle assist um <laughs> just a monster in the middle yet again um Unfortunate he didn't make it the full ninety, but uh, I appreciate his seventy-five. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's gone for the goal scorer today. Interesting. Uh, I mean, I'm not complaining. I it's it's fully justified. Do you, what did you guys think of the first goal? Uh, obvious, like the VAR did look at this. So this is like the the. Uh, Potential offsides on Yokerez obstructing oh, okay. um, Trubin on the first goal. Um, I've got the, the picture here. Who they won? drew yeah, the lines, the picture, and right. the lines are insane. They don't the make lines, any the sense. Lines, they're... You look at it with the naked eye, and he looks offside, and then you look at these lines, and you're like, "Where? Is where the is the line? line? Like, where are we drawing? These where lines? is the line from Yokerez even coming from? It's the blue one, I think. I think no, it's, it's the his, red one. It's I the think blue that's the red. I think it's it's the red. So I think it's there's his a, boot, maybe. There's another overhead angle. Oh, go to the go to the tweet that that is quote tweeting, uh, Sam. Okay. Oh, this one. Yeah. Okay. This one. Like. He really does. It looks like his foot's further ahead than the Benfica player. Yeah, but, you know. I know it's not a. That's definitely not a fair. It's not a perfect angle, angle or anything, but, yeah. but you're, it, it gives you a much different impression than that other angle does. Yeah, that's true. Man. I think we're very fortunate. That's all I'm gonna say. I think that one we're because I've seen away, this exact scenario have been disallowed multiple times this season, and they're yeah, very inconsistent. Braga, like it's kind of similar almost. The thing is, is that I think like they like VAR is aware of this, right? They're like I, he is in the path of the keeper, but it doesn't matter because he's onside. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy a little bit, but that's a little <laughs> that's a little wild, and I think we are a bit lucky to get away with that one. I thought because it definitely looks like in through this angle that Otamendi's foot. Yeah, it's is, just so tough to tell. Yeah. It's so it's because it it's just a mass of humanity. It's tough, and this isn't this angle makes. But again, look at the angle. It's yeah, it's tough. Not going to do him any favors. And it's still close, but yeah, it's tough. It's, yeah. I guess I guess they ultimately made the right decision because they stuck with the decision on the field, right? Yeah, yeah. They, if, if you're not sure, over, us, they didn't but, yeah. overrule it on the field, right? So. Well, again, but even so, I don't think eighteen centimeters. It was eighty centimeters. I don't think it's, oh, if it, it was eight. Even if he is on side, I don't think yeah. it's eighteen centimeters. I think it's a lot smaller than that. <laughs> no, but there's I mean, no I'll way that there's it. no shot that is eighteen centimeters. It's, it's got to be closer, to like five. Yeah, <laughs> like, no way. But yeah, I think that's all the the the. Oh yeah, and also when Joker is blew by Altamendi, and then they called an offensive, the delayed oh, offense. Called the offensive foul. Foul. <laughs> I, fuck it. That was that the worst just, decision was I have stupid. ever seen. It's more of a second yellow on Otamendi than uh, <laughs> it's uh, a foul yeah. on I don't know if we have, have the, the photo here, but it was absolutely yeah. crazy. I could not believe that. And that that one was that one was weird. That one I was like, what the hell are we doing as a people? Yeah. Do you know what is also a bit weird about this game? And it was the reaction uh, of uh, Antonio Silva. After oh, at the end, was, with the dude, he was freaking out. He was also freaking out at the ref. Yeah, yeah all, I think all of them were freaking the out. Ref on there. He was the ringleader of it, though. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, he was there. He led the uh, the merry <laughs> the merry men, the band of misfits there. Yeah, it made me laugh when they were like uh, Antonio Silva. Unless he's just saying like he's in the league. Out, like, what did what he mean doing. by that? I my initial thought was like. I, I mean, I saw the people meme it, like, oh, the amount of times Benfica lost or what place Benfica yeah. is in. But I'm like, I assume he was just saying, like, like peace. Like, cool. Your guys but I also ready. saw one where he's holding up three fingers. I, I don't know. Holding up three. He is holding up three. Oh, he's there, holding up three. Oh, he is there? holding up three there. Okay. Yeah. Unless he suddenly there. has a Simpsons hand. Has, has yeah. he won three titles for Benfica? Is that it? <laughs> no, he's won one. We got three finals left. I think there's more games left than that. Maybe, mm. unless they're thinking about. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't know. I feel like that. It's got. It's either just like I don't. I don't know. I really. I mean, don't. they're yeah, not he, gonna drop to third. <laughs> yeah, he's got one one league title, so I, I don't know what he's talking about. I'm yeah. Really. I'm confused as to what uh, what, the what he was doing. Or maybe two. maybe he meant nothing. Honestly, uh, who yeah. the hell knows. Or like you know, word to to your mother. I don't know. 
Yeah. If anyone does know, uh, let us know. I suppose. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I I know a lot of people on sporting Twitter, especially like clowned them with like some funny, funny little quote tweets. Like, yeah, that's what plays there in league, or like that's how many games they've lost to us, or whatever. But yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know. <laughs> the 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 Inacio, Oh, he's saying that they have three stars above the badge. Makes sense. That that makes a bit more each sense. Star but they're the only team that does 10. stars above the badge because no other Portuguese team does it. Yeah, but each one represents like ten titles or something. So yeah, yeah. I remember when I was at Estadio to lose in like sixth grade on the guided tour with my father, and yeah. they said that. And I, for oh, some okay. reason, I remember that. So they're at yeah, thirty-eight. Every, now. Every so what, they don't get a four does... star until they hit forty. I, I don't fuck. Yeah, because like every <laughs> team slash league does things a bit different. Like Celtic has one star above their badge, but it's just for their European Cup in like the sixties. That's it. I mean, a maybe they have like... two. They have a just case for having two stars. You know. Yeah, because they're two-time European champions. Well deserved. It's like um, Bayern has it like for every. I think it's Bundesliga the same. It's like for every ten. You get a star. It's like Bayern's got like four or five stars. Uh, Dortmund's got like two stars, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, so I, I don't know what the I don't know. I, at the day, we don't know what this this hand gesture, the three or the two or whatever the shitty <laughs> held up meant. Yeah, I think, it, I think I think I think it is. I think it, I think it is to the stars. This now. is too much. This is too much time on something that really doesn't matter. I really don't care about it. Stargate. Why we, we're gonna? I don't care about it. this. <laughs> But yeah, uh, thoughts on the foul deeds a bit goal. I can't remember it to be honest. I don't, I don't know if you guys the remember foul. the free kick. Oh, this it's it's a it is a silly foul to give away. It's a foul, but it's a silly foul. But when you think away. logically, Di Maria shouldn't really be on the pitch to give away to, to get the assist to give that, that foul to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a nice but it's header. stupid. It's stupid defending on the goal, like the defending yeah. from Matias Rice in particular. Like he he's he's busy watching the player in front of him. There's a player right behind him. That he shouldn't yeah. be paying attention to. And this this comment, uh, he corrects himself to Charisma, and that is spot on. The Charisma foul uh, against Porto was, okay. was spot on. Now I think about it, yeah. Almost the same. I don't know how... The, the thing is, the referee didn't give it. It was the linesman. He waited till Yokoz was a bit more further away from Otto They didn't give it right away. It was the the flag. Yeah. They waited a bit to give it. To give it. Yeah. It feels like when we watch... Well, when, when I watch Portuguese football, it's when usually if, if you scream the loudest... The linesman of the referee will probably we'll blow. Make, we'll blow the whistle. We'll blow and to be fair, back. Nuno Santos does that quite a lot as well. So it's not just oh, like he's a, a sport of a bigger thing. He is, he is a screamer, yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it on the game, unless you two can think of anything else regarding the game itself. Uh, No, not on my end. I feel like we've kind of covered what we wanted to cover. Cool. Now, news items. We have a few. Indeed. I think the most, uh, you know, Pressing one is Ruben Amre's potential departure. Uh, Pedro uh, Sevaldu has oh, yeah. uh, been all over it, but he has been contradicting himself left, right, and center as well, saying the negotiations are speeding up. Then a meeting is taking place to negotiate the final terms. So to me, final terms is like, okay, deal's about to it's be done. It's done deal. Yeah. Like it's basically yeah. just they're dotting the I's, crossing the T's. And then, oh, yeah, there's, there's no agreement. There's nothing. The <laughs> no, no. Like, what was that? So, yeah, and then apparently, yeah, we didn't receive any offer anyway. But, you know. What did you guys make of the handshake? Because he has a $10 million release clause internally, a $20 yeah. million release clause internationally. I thought it was the other and way And a $10 million or 10 million euro handshake deal to not honor the $20 million. Yeah. I thought, it was, I, so I thought I, the, the $20 million was for domestic. Initially, or is it higher for? I thought the domestic, like if another port domestic want to trigger it, that was, was thirty. Higher. That was thirty. Yeah. Oh, it's thirty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then I think it was twenty was domestic. Twenty for anything outside of Portugal, yeah. but they're negotiating a ten, which is still recouping their investment because they spent ten million on him. I think they spent Brown. a little bit more because remember they didn't pay for like a year or two, and then they had like two or three million of interest. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think so I, th I don't know if the, if the interest actually ever got paid or it was just like okay, know, yeah, that that's yeah. 30 I, I assume I think it was just a ten because we didn't we would have seen it in the uh, in the accounts too. I, I think they point. used COVID as as the reason to why we couldn't. I, I want to say that's that's what I can remember. Yeah, I think it, I think it was just the ten million, Chris, because I feel like that would have po popped up in like uh, like the general like the sod uh, financials at some point, and it hasn't yet because we would have made we would have made a note of that. 
yeah. you would have made a note. You're the financial guy for that stuff. I feel like that would have popped. I just feel like that would have popped up if we had the interest on that. Yeah. Yeah. I I do think it makes sense. And I've said it before that I think if Amarim does want to leave, we should shouldn't stand we should, in his way. We can't force him to stay. But I also think we should be getting something back for it. We can't just let him leave on a free. So um if they're getting know, the ten if they're getting ten million back, which is what they paid for him, you've recouped your investment. You've made your money back. You've broken even, but you've also probably won like several titles, so you, several trophies in the process. So, at that point, you figure it was worth the investment. <laughs> yeah, but I, I yeah, I, as long as we get, like I said, if we get like twelve million or fifteen million, just to get that, uh, you know, bit of profit from, Ramarin, it would I be think. yeah, it would be nice. And I think, especially if he wins the league, I know he keeps saying, "Oh, if we don't win anything, like." You know, I'll leave. I'm leaving but anyways. I think he said that he, in like January, or December. He said that a couple times, I think. Yeah. yeah, and I think for me, it's just you know, if he goes and we, we win the double, we win the league, or we win the Tassa, then it's like okay, he wins the league, he's done it twice. No sport managers ever won twice in I think four years, I, I, like in this generation at least, in like the last twenty, not since 20, like the 30 years, sixties or seventies. No. Yeah, and then winning the only trophies never won with Sporting, which is the. Uh, the Tassa. Um, Tassa and like this, and uh, Joao George says, you know, if if we get qualified for the Champions League, I think that's forty million just straight away for direct qualification. Forty million guaranteed, just just for being there. Yeah, yeah, and, and winning the league gets you some money. And let's be honest, we Yoko is probably on the way out for hundred million, eighty million, ninety million, wherever you want to put it. So you're gonna you're gonna lose at least one or two key players for big money. Right. And think how much Amrim has made us just in player sales. So he signed Ugarte and you know doubled investment or tripled investment. More he, than uh, yeah, more than that. Yeah, signed Pedro Porro for eight million, sort of for forty-five, and you know giving Mateus Nunes the, the chances he did. He's made us so much money. Yeah, you know, manage the chances that he did too, right? Like yes. Yeah, so. And you look at even squad players that are that he's brought in that are still with us that play a key role, like the like the pots. Um, like the Nuno Sancho, even the Mateus Reiches of the world, um, like the guys that still have like a good to great role on the team. Uh, Edwards is another one. Even think how you could say, uh, especially this season, like you look mm-hmm. at the players he's brought in. Diamond, yeah, not all of them have been cheap, but like they've been. Remember they've when Trincon was transfers. good and then ass and then good again? He, yeah. He's a, he's <laughs> such a streaky player, isn't he? Yeah, he he's is such a he's streaky definition. player. Him, him, him and pa- like him and pa- him and Pot Ned were like that. Those three wingers are all like they just have of a those three. I actually think Pot is the most consistent. Yeah, which is which I says a, which says yeah. it's more of an indictment on the other two than it is on <laughs> on Pot's ability personally. And I love Pot; he's one of my favorite players. But that's a bit yeah. of an indictment on Trincao and Edwards <laughs> and their consistency. Yeah, but for me, I just think, you know, he's done so much for us. He has rejuvenated the club in terms of just, you know, not even just like results, but like uh, recruitment, uh, fan participation, stadium. That's all because of Amrim. You could pinpoint it as soon as Amrim came in the door, everything went up. And I think, you know, he's got to move on for the sake of his career. I think he'd be stupid not to, especially with all these jobs available. He's grown as a man. We've seen him grow as a manager as well. Yeah. He used to... Used to used to not not take you if you didn't speak Portuguese or Spanish. Yeah, and, you know now he realizes that there's a lot of good players out there that, that speak that more than Portuguese Spanish. Those two languages. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know with the amount of jobs that are open, it, Liverpool are the favourites, but you know Bayern Munich, Barcelona I mentioned it before we went live, but the the, the possibility be, of like Chelsea or Man United. More openings, yeah. Or, I think you know, yeah, we, we did briefly chat before. I, I, my personal opinion, I think Liverpool is probably the biggest drummer right now because it's it's clear that the coach is definitely leaving. Other teams are going to change managers, big teams. Um, so I, I think that um, others are going to get in the race, and I think the Barcelona is going to become a bigger story as well because it's another team where the manager seems to be for sure leaving. So. We're going to get more. It gives you like an extra rumors. month for the rumor to go, you know? Yeah, we're going to see. I think we're going to see more rumors probably outside of just Liverpool over the next couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, like this thing's going to take on a bit of a life of its own for, for a small period for sure. But nothing's certain until like it's announced by either of the clubs and, and, yeah. and the man himself. 
Realistic. That's the thing. It, today, so I woke up uh, probably about 8 a.m. I saw Paris Bell do a say, you know, no agreement. I saw, I think it was Plenty Gold, Sky Sports, News Germany saying that it's pretty much a done deal. Final signature taking place. Bruno Andrade says it's a, yeah. it's a done deal. It's like, okay. There's been so it, many, there's been like so many con- contradicting reports. Like you just, until we actually get something more official, like it, it is, he's, it is what it is. And for me, it's just like in the, the social media age, I don't want to sound like an, an old head here, but it's like people are so quick to try and be the first to break a story. Even they want to get they want to get the scoop first. That's what it is. Yeah. And they're and not it is, properly vetting their sources. The next level manager is like a big thing. Like it's a big job to, to take for, for anyone, let That's alone huge. Women, I'm really... one of the most coveted jobs in not just England, but in football. Yeah, but I also don't think it makes sense for Liverpool to, to announce a manager before the end of the season. They're in a title race just as much as we are. They've still got um, Arsenal. They're and City way above closer, them. too. They're all like a point away. Like, yeah, and they've still got Europa League as well. So it's not like they're like they're not in short competition. So I don't think they're going to announce anything to the end of the season. I also don't think we're going to announce anything until if if I don't say if because I don't want this until at least like, until they well. either they know they're in, they clinch the league title or they're out for good. Um, yes. we're not going to hear anything. You, I could see, I could see finding it like the week of the Tassa, like the yeah. fine, like that, like a few days before. It wouldn't shock me if it came out like around that time officially. Like, yeah, this is. If he was like, yeah, this is going to be my last game when they play, whoever they may play, whether it be Porto or Guimarães. Um, I feel like that's probably the time we'll hear about it because at that point the league will be wrapped up one way or another. The games are going to be done, and then you're going to yeah. have that five or six days in between that and the final tasa right so we'll we'll see what what happens then i think i think that's the time period when you can expect something more official to come out yeah and this comment here is spot on namrim is to us what copies to, to liverpool i think both mm-hmm. came in re- rejuvenated the club recruitment got Things better fans got better club culture got better and and yeah and i do think amarim could be a good fit for liverpool i think looking at Everything he's had to, to, to go through. He will be. I've had Liverpool fans ask me about like my thoughts and what they could expect if they get him. I said he will. He's a very calm manager. He doesn't speak. He doesn't say a whole lot of things without meaning or substance, um, which will be a bit of a departure from Jurgen Klopp because Jurgen tends to be a bit more bombastic and animated. <laughs> as he does. So it'll be a bit of a departure, but I think in terms of philosophy, in terms of man management, they're going to get a similar person. I think it's just demeanor wise where you're going to see the most difference because Amarine's not someone who gets very hot or um, very angry very often. Yeah. He's got a bit more, I think he's got a bit more of a core head than Jurgen Klopp. And it was also what Chris was saying. We've seen him grow as manager. When he first came in, he was getting red cards for like every Oh, every game. other game he was getting sent off, man. It was a joke. <laughs> When's he out? It was a joke. All right, over under on how long he gets. He lasts this game. Like every And game. then it, and then he, he doesn't even speak about referees anymore. Even if they're at the center of attention, he's like. Unless yeah, it's something well. really bad. But even then, he's kind of like remain non-committal on those issues. Yeah. And he'd always take the blame. He will never, will never blame the players. He'll always say, you know, the coach's fault. Stuff he's like he's big on accountability, yeah. Uh, what I think about Tuchel is that is we oh, cannot God. afford that. Who? No, okay, we. I th- I joke that we don't want to have this discussion until we know he's gone, but I feel like we can have discussion. Like who comes in now, if if and when he's gone. All right, I've got two that I would like to see, uh, and one of them is Abel from Palmeiras. I think you know the connection is there, the the link is there, and it makes sense. I think he sort of cheers everything in Brazil. He could probably make a step up to a, a better league, maybe than Portugal. But I think we now yeah. have the money to go and get him, especially you know, qualifying for the Champions League. If we do get money from Real Madrid, yeah. making sales, I think it would be a smart move to go for Abel. Also, uh, Pacheco from Guimarães has done a fantastic job, yes, and you know, I... one drip gone, one drip coming in. You know, you drip know, we, we like drip for him, man. And, uh, so I drip. I have two, but I want Chris to go first because I feel like his two might. <laughs> Be similar to my two. Mourinho is the first. <laughs> <laughs> no, <Yeah. man. laughs> I think that would be an absolute disaster. Well, you he's know a... what? Abel's Abel's a hothead too. So you're gonna get two sight. If he's linked. He's been linked to Benfica and Sporting. Actually, record today said that Benfica is not interested. Um, Mourinho actually was linked to Sporting before. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember that. Right. Before we signed Shilash, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> And he said, he said uh, I believe, and I quote, I'm not going to that circus. 
was which, understandable. Which, I mean, anybody, at the time, the club was more anybody more of who circus. would have thought of taking up that managerial job that would have been career suicide. But at the same time, whoever takes this job will, will obviously does understand that, like, it's not going to be a rebuild per se. But you're, you're gonna to lose like three of the best players on the team right now. Yeah, you're expected to stay competitive with this team. Yeah, and I, with Jose, we're going from a manager who would like who protects players, and you know, like I said, always put the blame on himself to Mourinho to be like, okay. But about think... Abel's a little bit like that. Abel's a bit of a hothead too, not to the extent of Mourinho, obviously. Yeah, but like you're still gonna get that bit of a. I, and I like Abel, but I feel like that's. That's a you're still gonna have a bit of that problem with Abel, uh, Abel. But I th- I think Abel with the connection to the club means that he can see it from It'd a player's perspective. Like I think he would have some fun with this team, and I'd like to see what he could do in uh, in Portugal or just in Europe in general. Uh, yeah. Mourinho, am I the only who hates Eddie Mourinho? Mourinho would let's not care. So Mourinho, it would be must see TV. I do, I, do, I do not want him anyway. It would be must see TV. But only for so long. <laughs> it would be good for like the first week, and then as soon as something goes wrong with Mourinho, it's always just yeah. It's over. <laughs> I I just do not. I feel is it like... is it is it Verandas trying to right the wrongs of the idiot Sportingistas twenty some years ago that we were in on him, and they said no to Mourinho because you know he was a Sportingista. That might be the one of the biggest butterfly effects ever in football, by the way. As yeah, us definitely. not hiring Mourinho and him going to Porto. Because you look at the knock-on effect that had of him going, winning almost two back-to-back travels with Porto, where he wins the UEFA Cup, and then he wins the Champions League the next year, and then he goes to Chelsea, has a success there, has a yeah. s- success in Italy. Like That might be one of the biggest butterfly effects in world football, is Mourinho not signing with Sporting in like 2002 or 2003, or whatever I think was. I think a point Mourinho would be the same... Vain as a point in George Jesus in 15 16. It's, it's just, just to make it's just a just big dick swing, I think. It should no, it's just like you, you're going for the name, you're not going for you know what's best. You go for the name, you go you're for going, something. you're going in there and you're slapping your dick on the table and saying, This is who we are. That's what it is. I'm not, I'm not, I'm also cool. not saying that uh, Alvaro Pacheco is going to go with, like he'd be much better, but I think he's probably a better option around the squad and he's got a decent enough track record with. Gimarez and and before that with Vizela, whereas Mourinho's last job, Roma, sack, uh, Spur. Uh, to be fair, did win the um, Conference League, so given that it was also in the final of the Europa Spurs is also disorganized, though. Went downhill. Spurs, sacked. United, sacked. To be fair, both of them disorganized. Before that, what? Yeah. Uh, Chelsea, sack. Yeah, I, I, I just don't know. I think, was there a team between Chelsea and me? I don't think, think it was, right? No, it was just Chelsea, uh, no, I don't believe so. But I just, yeah, I just do not want him anywhere near the club. But Chris, you gave one. What's your, what your other uh, or managerial other. appointment mm. if you have one? I'm trying to think of like who is like a young, upcoming manager, or even like someone who would realistically we would we would get because I know I've seen a few names bandied around on the timeline. Uh, from different people. Braga's taking the Aruka manager. Yes, he's going to be Daniel uh, Souza, yeah. manager. Daniel, Daniel, what, what's what you gonna Daniel Souza. Yeah, sure. They took him. I mean, I'm, I'm looking now at transfer market about coaches who are uh, free agents, and there are some big names. I don't think the majority of them will be going. Or even okay, well, let's who who can we eliminate right off the bat? We can eliminate everybody on screen. <laughs> that I can see right now. Would would Grandpa maybe make a, a dive? Maybe no, no shot. You don't think so? No, His stocks low. No. His stock Young is coach. low. And His like stocks it... low, but I don't think they go for an English guy. Don't yeah. want Antonio Conte. No, definitely not. Definitely don't want Rudy Garcia. Uh, yeah, Lopetegui, Steve mm-hmm. Cooper, <laughs> Lopetegui, Sam Allardyce. Big oh, Sam. Let's get Big Sam in on the call. Lopetegui, uh, who else is scrolling? Let's uh, see. Let's 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 see. let did he get fired? They had a good AFCON. I'm surprised. Yeah, what the fuck? Unless it was like a financial dispute. Which Damn, bro. 
Yeah, there's a tough crowd. Team. Jesse Nico Marsh. <laughs> Nico Kovac, Jesus. Maurizio Sari. Let's get Sari ball in. Uh, yeah. I mean, Gattaro, I can try and Gattaro, build up our Gattuso is Gattuso is a just a foot man. Yeah, let's let's do this. Let's try and see Portuguese, Search for Portuguese coaches. Man. Okay, that's obviously our question. Well, this is going to Carlos Carvajal. I mean, not at this point, but I, I like Carlos. I Carvajal could see. More. You know what? I could see them going after a Carvajal. Bruno Lage, Paul Sousa. I thought Bruno Lage was Lage. one that, if you remember at the start of last season, there was yeah. he was all friendly with Verandas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Petit. 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 God no, Lord no. Mario Silva. Referee fell off. Ramos, Jaime Pacheco. I tell you, it's not going to be anyone else down here. Yeah. I think. Just wearing just wall the Fernando back for like the third or fourth time. Yeah. There, don't even not, move yeah. your mouse away from Carlos Queiroz. Don't put that evil on me. Yeah. I, d I don't think there's there's much there in Portugal. Maybe like maybe one or two. I think. Roger Schmidt. One that's not, one that's not free, but I could see them. Don't put Sergio that. Sergio Costa. No, one that's not. No, they have to pay would... twenty-two million to fire him. They're not going to. I don't want. Yeah, I. I think. I don't think we can get Constell. One that I wouldn't mind, but he's probably in our price range. He's not free. Would be um, Paulo Fonseca. Would be fun. Yeah. Jardim would be good too, but I don't think he's leaving Saudi. I don't think he's leaving Saudi. He doesn't seem very ambitious. Yeah, that was always his downfall. Very good manager, but like, you know, when the dollar fans are there, he's gone. Yeah. As much as I would like Jardim, I think he would be. I actually do think he would be a good fit. I just don't think he's. I feel he just doesn't seem. He, since Spartan, where has he gone? Like he's got no ambition, right? I feel like if he had ambition, he would have gone somewhere else. I think Bruno Lage should be a favorite, just from what we spoke about earlier, oh, which I was. I, want Bruno I, I don't want him, but the way they were speaking. I think. I, I think considering the last job or two he's had has gone up so badly in flames is what turns me off of Bruno Lage the most because he does play. He does when it's working. Does play attractive football. I think just the train wrecks that were his last two managerial jobs turned me off of him. I don't think Petit is actually going to sign for Jorvisson by the looks of what uh, yeah. the newspapers are saying. I think they said he was quite far away from Jorvisson. So yeah, they maybe... don't even they don't actually have like a a coach. Okay. Yeah, and I don't think they'll get one in in the last next three days anyway. Because we play on they're Friday. Sign a dude. They're just going to sign some dude on Friday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or there's getting yeah. a lot of Leonardo Jardim's, but I don't think because I don't see Jardim as realistic. Yeah, too much of a step up for him. Yeah, that's too big of a step up. Uh, Nuno Spirit Santo, he's, no, he's no, Saudi still all right. No, I don't. don't give me Nuno. God, that's even more. No, he's that. he's a um, where is he? Not in the yeah, forest. Oh, yeah, he, he was in Saudi and that lasted like a cup of coffee. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think for me, Alvaro Pacheco would be the one because I think he would, I want the drift. But you, I think he brings that calmness that you have with Amorim. Um, he wouldn't cause like a big, uh, like any big bullshit in the media. I think he'd be good. And I like the way his teams play football. They're fun. They're entertaining. Uh, they're effective. Uh, but I also have, and I also have the chaos options of a Belfodita and then, uh, Mourinho as a third, just for, just for the, just for the box office. Yeah. I don't I don't first... tell me and don't no one lie to me. Don't tell me at least for like the first day you would be like, oh shit, this is happening. This could this is gonna go really good for a bit and then it's gonna suck. But we're gonna enjoy the the friends we're gonna make along the way are gonna be fantastic if we sign Mourinho. But we won't. Mm. I've seen Marco Silva's name pop. He, up his here. stock is way too high, but his stock's too. Yeah, I don't think I don't think he's he's realistic. Yeah, I think with um, guys like people say like Luis Neto. And Jock Pereira and, and these guys, I, I think <laughs> Jock Pereira is going to move to the B team. I think he'll go to uh, B team manager. Neto will go to under twenty threes manager or under nineteens manager, yeah. and then they'll be groomed to be there. But I don't think. Do they go after? Do they go outside the box? Go for like a Rui George or somebody like? I, I think they. The, what well, I was just thinking, but someone mentioned it that Avar Pacheco is green, and I also think that for players coming into sporting, you want. A well-known manager. Well, even like Ruben Amor isn't really a well like he's not well known, but the, the results are there. Is someone going to come like a you know like a Saint Just or you know someone um, who's like somewhat established? The in their career, are right? they going to come because our Pacheco is the manager? Maybe not. That's why maybe they go outside the box and go with like a we know a if we sign Mar we know like if that. we sign Mourinho, we're signing Nemanja Matic. 
<laughs> yeah. He's a stat yeah. we're getting him. He signs him everywhere he goes. <laughs> Get Harry Redknapp and sign Nico Crenshaw again for like, the, the fifth time. Uh, but yeah, I, for me, I think Abel would be my favorite. Pacheco in second, yeah. and then like forty fifth would be Jean. Uh, I was going to say Jean Martino, Jose Mourinho <laughs> would be my number forty five. I uh, just don't want him anywhere near the club, to be honest. I, I think um, of like dream would be Abel, even though it's such a drastic departure from Emery, just for how how he handles things like publicly. But the thing I is, with like, Abel, such a good fit. He did fall out with uh, Bruno Cavallo, and obviously that was a, a, a feels. I think it's probably about ten years ago now, but did fall out because he was the B team. I think he was the the B team manager. I remember, and he, I think, he either got sacked or you know. There was some whatever. sort of there was some sort of like disagreement. That but I think he'd be willing to come back now. But I also think maybe his stock is too high at the moment because you That's know he's thing, one. Like, are we still kind of priced out of him? But I, I still I think we've got the money now to you know have a shot at going for a big boy and going for a big gun. But time we'll, we'll see the next the next few weeks. Like once once things become I, a bit more concrete, then we'll probably start to hear actual names attached to to the job i do wonder if ruben amarim is going to have any say like it was with like sarah ferguson like saying you maybe you should go for this guy i don't think you should i don't think you should i think no. like why why should you get to choose your replacement for for football you look like Sir Alex picked david moy i mean david moy to be fair got thrown to the wolves was a little out of his element but also the team was so dis like the team was so disorganized um yeah. Yeah, I, I think – what was I talking about again? Oh, David uh, Moyes. Yeah, I just – I think I think it just wouldn't make sense. I feel like I feel like he should just – you're gone. It's uh, it's out of your hands now. We'll make the call. I think it might be good just to have a conversation be like, maybe you should go for this guy. But I don't think it should be like, oh, yeah, he said go if for he this has, guy. If he has guy. like a guy or two, he's like, oh, like at least talk to them and see. Like maybe it's a good fit, but go from there. I understand. Yeah. And obviously, like having probably a conversation with whoever they hire, regardless of his input, and just saying like, "Here's how we've done things. Like, here's you know what you should know. If you have a, if you have questions, need advice, let me know." Kind of thing. But I'm off. But it also could be something that we we see we go for like a left field manager, someone who just recently retired, like you know, an assistant manager like Arteta was with Arsenal. Even to extend, Ruben Amorim is or was at the time. Maybe we go for left field like that. Time. We're gonna sign Luis Philippe Scolari. We're signing, I, I, we're signing. He still manages, I think, in Brazil. I want to say. I have no clue. I thought he retired, but maybe not. I, I feel like he. We're still gonna go and does. get. We're gonna get Claudio Ranieri. <laughs> yeah, no, please do not. Dilly ding, dilly dong. <laughs> uh, Philippe Scolari is a free agent, I think. I thought he yeah. retired, but I don't know if that was actually official. He actually only left uh, Let's Come In Arrow uh, a month ago. So March 20th, 2024 is when that's he left. That's than I realized because I thought he was done when he was coaching uh, Pedernance. He so is linked to be the new Mexico manager. Yes, I saw that. Well, Mexico's in shambles right now with their federation, so not shocking. But yeah, I, I, I really don't know what... Uh, what who the next man i don't think anyone can say for certain oh it's definitely gonna be this guy because there's just so many names and yeah. to be fair nothing's confirmed yet you know maybe in a in a weird world maybe Emre it might be and it, it might even be a name we haven't even brought up yeah, yeah maybe maybe we've not talked about maybe emory wants to stay for another champions league campaign maybe it was a shot of the champions league who with knows? a new format i don't know who knows uh but yeah definitely not for no me. we do not do not put that evil on me we do not need for that sense Maybe we we'll get Martinez we, after the Euros. I'm for Dan Sancho. I'm cheering for Benfica. To be fair, there is also a possibility that a manager from the Euros gets sacked and we take an international manager. There is still, there's still there, a lot of things there. Who's there, though? Like, realistically. Roberto Martinez. Oh, gosh. He hasn't had a club job in years, to be fair. Gareth Southgate. <laughs> oh, yeah. Southgate's coming to us. This is a Portugal, <laughs> sure. Portuguese, a fucking British for Dan Sancho. That's just mm-hmm. what we need. What, yeah. We don't want for the nonsense. Let's we'll sign the British equivalent, though. That'll get the juices going. <laughs> I'll get the people excited. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like I said, I don't think anyone knows at this point. It's going to be a very interesting. I feel it's going to be a very long summer for us if he does choose to leave. But end know. of the day, like we'll find out when the rest of the audience finds out. <laughs> oh, we're all going to find out together. Yeah, I'm just having a quick look at some of the international managers. See, if there's anyone that could be there. Um, 
you know, it's not a lot to be honest. I know, I know Copa America is also this summer, but there's again, there's really not anybody who you would see in there that would you would think, oh, yeah, like they could be the coach, yeah. So, exactly. Shall we do? Uh, do you want to get on to predictions or do you want to get into fantasy first? Uh, we'll go to predictions first. Let me get go the ahead, pull that up. And I'll uh, uh, it is right there, and I will scroll, scroll down to the most. Scroll down. Chris had himself. Chris gained a couple points because he. I did. Uh, I got the score. You got the score. You got the exact. None of us got the goal scores. You got the exact score. Danny wasn't too far off. Uh, and then I, I, I was three two. I was the farthest one off, except for Sam, who just put nothing. Um, hate to see it. Hate to see I, it. I said, I said to Richard, I, I knew it was there, and I deliberately didn't want to jinx it. I did not want to put any score in, and that might sound like an excuse, but generally, I was like, I'm not going to put any anything in there. I don't want to jinx anything. I'm just going to be like, I'm going to leave it. Just, just guess he doesn't want it as much as we do, Chris. Uh, I, I, I just, I'm just too arrogant. I think that I feel like my prediction oh, kind of effect on the real you're world. You're too good for predictions now. I see how it is. That I'm is it. Damn, I'm too good. I'm too good to to make predictions with the boys. You know. That's that's why I don't do fantasy. I'm too good for that. I'm well. chasing. I'm chasing uh, Rich down. You gained two points this week. Yeah, you gained two because the predict. So if you go up, scroll to the top, Sam. Uh, Chris, I think is still ten, but it's down from like eleven, or it's down from the twelve that he was. Uh, you're only six points ahead of Sam, but if Sam wasn't so arrogant, maybe he would have actually been caught up. With <laughs> uh, and Sam's arrogance almost bite him in the ass because Danny has clawed back points and is only one point out of third place from the podium. Uh, so Sam, get your uh, – you figure no, out I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do mine right now for you. You're going to do Just yours work. right now. I'm gonna do mine I right did mine about an hour ago. So. I'm going to do mine right now too because I know I'll forget. <laughs> you know, 2-0, and I'll go with – Oh, 3-0. Uh, Brag, Ganser, and – I thought it was not playing. Uh, uh, you know, I'll, I'll I'll go safe and I'll go Jokeres. I'm going Jokeres, Bragansa, and I don't know so, who else. So you with. you just copy me now, Richard? Because if if you look, we have the exact <laughs> it'd be a look. <laughs> it'd be a look. Sickening. <laughs> I might go Jokeres, Brags. I feel like he's due. Jokeres times yeah. two, and Bragansa. I feel like I should technically go for three, but I'm going for the two score. So fuck you. <laughs> and then last, yeah, but not I haven't looked at fantasy, yeah. so God only knows what the hell is going on. I'm afraid to look. Yeah, I've also been signed out of fantasy, which is cool. That's uh, less than ideal. We can stall while you do it. that. Yeah, it's stalled on. So yeah, you got you got you got to get on your grind for your predictions, man. You've been giving away points left and right. That's. That's, all. That's why I built the lead that I have. I've been here grinding every week, uh, just putting in that work, man. It's the work that goes on when the cameras aren't rolling. Yeah, man. Like you don't see the behind. <laughs> you don't see like the behind the scenes of of the planning and the foresight and everything that all the work it takes to keep all things off a lot as a brand uh, at the Stromcast as a brand going. All right, team. What was that WWE promo I just I don't said? Know, man. <laughs> I, don't know, man. I don't know, man. You're not, you're not here. You're not here every week, man. Oh, I'll be it's honest. Worse, I, I found this a long time ago. I just wanted to see where you were going with that. <laughs> <WWE> <laughs> I just want to see where I was taking it. I took it to. Uh, I took it wherever it went. You know. Yeah. I could have uh, probably me... kept going if I really wanted to, but I gave up. <laughs> give Roman Reigns around for his money, man. Um, <laughs> yes, we'll get it up. So I, I'm oh, I I had a fantasy in ages. Dog shit. We we all had shit weeks. I'm not sure about fantasy for ages, and I still got the best points this week. So I'm not <laughs> Man, we did horrible, Chris. Chris yeah, it was a day. tough week. It was a week. rough week. For <sighs> I left ten line. points on the bench, seven points on the bench. Then Bond's yeah. on the bench still. Well, because Porto keep losing. Like, why? I don't Just... know what to tell you, dog. Go yeah, up. Porto players are Porto right players. Dude, 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 absolute yeah. duty. Uh, and then Richard with thirty-seven points. Thirty-seven. Uh, 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 Bonza, Sanjo, Carras, Pot. Because they didn't count as assist. Three points on the bench. Not three the the points, and that's really it. Yeah, I forgot you to take yeah. off my Benfica boys too. You had a player that was injured, and you didn't have anyone to sub in. Yeah, I, 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 I forgot my well. Benfica boys to take out Benfica boys too. How did uh, Danny end up doing? 
He only got 27. 27. He did oh, I got 20 points back on him. Let's go. 20 points on him, and you gained 10. 13th in, in, in the U.S. as well, Chris. What's yeah. the what's the total score? We'll uh, also, ahead. bro, Jota's first goal got turned into an own goal. That could have been two goals. Oh, him. rip. So uh, like, hang on. yeah, and you gained ten seeds. So the points I gained on you, like no. the last two weeks, Chris, means. Oh nothing. my god, I'm only down by like twenty. Oh, oh it's close! It's close! Danny. I kind of, I kind of just because Danny's been first all Danny, year. Danny, can you feel him like breathing down your neck? <laughs> that was, I was on his red card, man. Getting the zero Stoma points. John Mario, zero points. John Mario and Costa. I feel like he that? might have forgot to change it because I feel like he probably would have taken Antonio Silva and Rafa out. He would have definitely but... taken his Benfica, at least a couple Benfica boys off. What's his bench? Look seven like? points on the he's bench. Oh, yeah. He could have taken, he could have gained at least seven points right off the he's, bat. He's still he's the won. unknown keeper. He's still got, unknown. but it does count against his salary. We know it's not the hack. It's not the hack we thought it was. <laughs> and so if we it's, take it's pretty much overall... Jover. It's pretty much Jover for Sam and I. Yeah. Actually, you've gained a few points on me, Sam, but it's still kind of Jover for You're us. You're just kind of stranded I'm, in between seconds. We're in no man. We're in no. I'm in no man's land. I just need to remember to keep changing it because I just keep forgetting. And yeah. just, I'm I'm in no. Me and Sam are just in no man's land. But Chris Oliveira, all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, uh, got a shot here. Cr- might be producing the stuff of dreams. This might be. Is Danny? Is Danny gonna pay homage to our our mighty sporting and blow like a 200 point lead or whatever <laughs> it was because that would be the stuff of legends that would be like mount rushmore uh behavior. yeah that would be legendary man 20 po- you're only like 20 some points off. that's wild i've been closing that's- the gap slowly for like five six yeah, you're, what, you're 20 now. you're 22 you're 22 points off like all you need is one more like not even monster week, just to have like another decent week, and for him to kind of have like a two tens, two tens. Week. Yeah. You get like two, yeah. You get like a week where you gain like another 10, 15 points on him, and suddenly like it's a title race. Yeah. Holy uh, smokes! That is it. There is one more post I want to share before we wrap up. Uh, actually, okay. let's do two. Uh, this one, got two. Uh, All right, let's go. Well, this one's not really news, but I feel like you know it might be relevant to someone. We These boys are starting a, a, a Braga, it's a Braga UK podcast. Oh, nice. podcast. If, nice. if you do know anyone that is uh is wants to be a part of it, you know, send them a message. We've retweeted. Host, nah, Dave, I hope Dave, they gotta get Dave Pereira on there for sure. I don't know who the host is, they don't have anything, they don't have their profiles linked. No, but yeah, if you do know anyone that is uh is uh, interested you know let us know let them know i think their dms are open so you should be good to to, to do that uh and we'll then have to, definitely when we do uh braga games next year we'll have to uh have those boys on and go on there yeah most definitely you know. uh there was also i went on a uh uh anfield sector uh sort of stream to speak awesome. about Rim. Uh, it's been there so if you want to have a look go through there uh, and this was what I was going to end on. And that was uh, recent, I think only about an hour, maybe two ago. The oh, yeah, agent was saying amazing. that it will be a difficult to stay at sporting if Ruben Amrim does leave. And that was his agent saying to Abola. And he also said, uh, the day I, I, we met, I said to Ruben, here's my boy. He came to sporting because of you. Uh, many people don't know, but there were eight clubs very interested in Victor Jokers last summer. They all paid commentary more than sporting. They all paid more wages and a higher commission to the agent. What happened? I bought him to Sporting, and I I bought him to Sporting because of Ruben Amarim because I know his work and his work with the players. I chose Ruben because he is a coach at another level. Is also yeah, this is just coach. what you want to hear in a in a title race? Uh, you know, yeah, the uh, worst not not the worst possible time, but not the definitely far from the best time. Yeah, and to be fair, I, people are saying that we we know Yorkwest is pretty much going to leave, and Amarim is going to leave anyway. But I just think it's a bit of like you know, look the agent sort of like blowing his own. Trumpet be like, oh, look at me. I bought him here. I did this. You don't like, see shit like you know what? You don't see shit like this from any other league but Portugal, really. Like to no. like to the same other than like Mbappe, because it's a circus and it's the most clicks. Like Portugal is the worst <laughs> for this type of news to drop. It's yeah. always at the worst time. You don't see this type of like nonsense in England. Very, very seldom. Yeah. It just does it doesn't certainly, certainly not for a team in a title race, anyways. Yeah, I just uh, you know with four points clear with a game in hand, really really tough schedule coming up, and it's just like I just prob like you said not the worst timing, but not the greatest. If we win, if we keep the four point advantage until the the makeup game, which is coming up very soon, 
Um, and then we win that makeup game. It can feasibly be seven points, depending yeah. on other results. Um, be seven points with how many games remaining? Sorry, my calculator brain's going. Seven, eight, eight games. No, because we've already got like eight, six, seven, or eight games left. Yeah. Oh, does that know what you're asking? That's what I'm asking. If we if we keep the four point advantage and then it becomes seven points all of a sudden from uh, from the makeup game, like assuming assuming points stay the same until the makeup game, then we win the makeup game. How many games left will we have? That's what I wanted to know. Let me check for you because uh, I actually don't know either. Because it's not uh, it's not many. I'm sure someone will know in the comments, but I'll just check anyway. Uh, so matches. Uh, so our, our makeup game is is this week. Right well, the next next week coming. So Tuesday, sixteenth of April is the makeup game. So, so how many games do we have right now? Eight. So we have seven games. We have seven games left. I believe it's a thirty-four match schedule. Correct. So, so if 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 we yeah if we beat uh, from an account, yeah. then we'll have six games. I think. So yeah, six games after that. No seven. Or, or no five. Five, because we played Jovi Sent this week. Yes, sorry, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Fine, I was, yeah. I was like, hang on, no, we have, so we have, we have seven games left. We're playing two because of the makeup game, so I'll guess down to seven point advantage with five games potentially. <laughs> this comment here, I'm not worried about your Chris leaving. His agent has to prime out of Antonio, Antonio Silva's Silver. pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, that's harsh. A uh, that harsh. <laughs> that's a great one. one. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, so it could, it could potentially with five games, we could. And if Benfica stumbles, let's say, and I'm getting ahead of ourselves, we could potentially be Campeões at Porto. Yeah. I doubt it happens. Yeah. It, it would take miracles. It would take you moving the sun and the moon and the earth and stars. I think Benfica would have to lose the next two. Benfica would have to lose at least draw. one and probably draw one. And we would need to still win both of those games before even before even coming to that conclusion. Yeah, I think Benfica still have to family. play Braga, right? No, we have Jovi Sen. No, sorry, Benfica. Oh, so yes, they do. We have Jovi because we have Jovi Sen, Family Cow, and uh, Guimarães, and then it's Porto. So Benfica's schedule is Morient's uh, this Saturday, and then they play next week against Ferenc away. Then they play against Benfica. Uh, sorry, Braga at home. Then Braga's the, the at home. Uh, sorry, not Caspia at home. Uh, Family Cow away as well. Tricky. It's a tough, tough schedule I, for them. I think I think they win their next two. I think those are they should win those. I think it's the Braga one and maybe Family Cower. The reason I don't but think I, they could win is because they've got Marseille in between. They've got Marseille this oh, thurs, this Thursday. Europa League. They do have Europa League. So if they're going to drop points, it's going to be now. And I think they could actually beat Marseille because I don't know. I'm, I don't really follow league you know, that much, but I would say probably Benfica is better team than Marseille. And the further they go, the more games they have to play. So, that's, that's as long as I, just as long as I don't win the whole thing, I'm I'm fine with losing the final again. Yeah, true. Uh, yeah, I guess Braga aren't a problem anymore because they don't know the the manager. They're but, shambolic. You know, yeah, know. Benfica are also quite shambolic. They lost five. Yeah, Porto better. Porto better watch out for Braga at this rate. The way Porto are playing though. Yeah, it does feel like every time Porto drop points, Braga also drop points because they lost. Yeah, Braga three, can yeah. never. Braga is the definition. They're two points behind Porto and. Because Braga drops points continually every time Porto also drops points, they're just stuck where they are. Yeah, let's have a look at the table then. So we're first that we're seventy one points of game in hand, Befica in second with sixty seven, Porto with fifty eight, and, <coughs> and Braga with fifty six as well. Also given race to be fair, fifty six as well. Yeah. Not, not they won the last five. So um yeah, they're they're in hell, hell and... form. What's our yeah, relegation you know. battle looking like quickly before we let the people go? Uh, Shah's pretty much down. Shah's uh, Vizella, Shah's 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 for them. I would even say maybe Vizella's pretty much gone too. Yeah, just I think Vizella's five to make up what five points. I just don't see that happening. We're playing Jovic uh, in a very good time as well. Last three, uh, last three games were three losses and two draws. Sorry, last five games three losses and two draws. Yeah, so. I think I think uh, I think it's Joey for Shah's and Vizella, and then it's going to be between like Portimonense and. Literally anybody from them to freaking probably. Well, yeah, there's the to tenth. There's only four points. And I know, I know, I know. And I think for Milakau and Oroko are safe now, but I would say oh, anywhere, God, anywhere yeah, from I'll ninth to sixteenth. Ninth to sixteenth, yeah. I think's got to have a look, and I think any of those lot can go now. But yeah, Victoria yeah. could finish that. To be fair, so um, 
I, um, Porto could finish fifth conceivably because of how things have been going. Yeah, and you know, I think the Porto elections in what two weeks as well. So like that it could bring even is more coming up. I think it's like the twenty sixth, isn't it? What twenty? Isn't it the what week of their right? one of their games? I want to say. Yeah. What if Antonio like, reaches third place? Then they would get the Europa League bid, if I'm not mistaken. I think it's. Is it no? It's not this one. Yeah, I think it's this one. I think this is their election, the 21st of April. Uh, oh, is, is that day before? Oh, the day before our game. There we go. Oh, um, okay. So yeah, that could even put Porto in, into more of a spiral, which would be good before we play them. But you know, <laughs> anyway, to be fair, I think even imagine if, if they lose, imagine Team the... Costa wins, then they lose the next day, anyways. And well, I think you, very, even, and then everyone's rethinking about their vote. <laughs> well, for me, it's like if they hire into the cluster, it's going to be people are going to be sorry if they keep in the cluster, it's going to be bad. If they change, then it's going to be turmoil of stock because I think there'll be a mass exodus of uh, of leaving, even maybe such a constant sound joining uh, pin of the cluster. Well, there'll definitely be a mass exodus of like the the ultras, like, exactly. a lot of ultra because he's got the ultras like pretty much on lock. He I'm pretty sure he's going to win again, but. You know, I, I think he's going to win, but I'm not... I think after this week, his chances went from like 70% to 60%. Every, every time they lose a game, it goes Every down, Every time it. they lose a game, it, it goes... It, that margin becomes ever so, so, so close. Uh, I mean, that would be horrible as well. Piano of course, does not have a lot of time left in general, man. He walks very, like, fragile. He speaks very fragile. What do you mean? He's he's the pinnacle of youth. He is a, he's a, he's a super villain. Chicken. He is a he's super a spring chicken. You're only as old as you feel. And he feels about 100. <laughs> he, feels, <laughs> he feels like Jesus Christ. He feels like a 2,000 years old. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Bro's first yeah. Christmas was the first Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> There's always that picture of uh, one of the royal families at Prince. The, who was one to die? Prince Philip? When Philip. I was in the car and he looks like absolutely He dead. looks like a corpse already in the car. That we're getting to that point to with Pete the, we're, we are getting to that point with Pete the Cost a little bit where it's like, man, is that dude okay? <laughs> like, not even like joking. It's like, man, that dude does not look well. I hope he's all right. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's pretty much it for today. Yeah, you guys yeah, keep anything else. We've just trailed off into a lot of nonsense the last like 10, 15 minutes. I think uh, yeah. I don't think there's any Real Madrid Dodge stuff either. Actually, now that I think about it. No. Don't believe really basketball really continues to freaking lose. They lost to Benfica yeah. by like 20. Yeah, they got smoked. I had to watch a little bit of that game. They got just demolished. But yeah, we'll wrap up there. Make sure you give uh, Richard a follow there. Also, shout out to Danny. You can join us today. Give him uh, a follow there. Give a follow to Chris as well. And also give a follow to myself. Of course, most importantly, give a follow to all things other on all social media and podcast platforms. We'll be there. But other than that, thank you guys uh, for watching. We'll see you hopefully next week uh, with uh, a better, another good result. But until then, we shall see you soon. Peace.